1985, this place was transformed. Bulldozers came in, announcing that 75% of its workforce will be met by strong defence. Burgess will meet with farming leaders tomorrow in the Victorian town of Mildura. Concord Oval. There's a lot of history here. People have sat in these exact chairs, a bit like me, and they've witnessed incredible sporting moments, whether that be in rugby league, rugby union, or even soccer. It's all been here at Concord. It's regarded as the geographical centre of Sydney, and that's why the New South Wales Waratahs thought it was the most suitable place for their home ground. In 1985, this place was transformed. Bulldozers came in, knocking down all the grandstands, and they transformed it into the state-of-the-art precinct that it is now. They even resurrected the tallest post in the Southern Hemisphere. Why? Because they had the Rugby World Cup in 1987 to prepare for. Nowadays, the West Tigers in Rugby League use this ground as a training facility, but they aren't the only ones using Concord Oval. West Harbour Rugby Club also use this ground as their home fixture in Sydney Shoot Shield competition. It's clear this Concord Oval still holds a special place in Australian lives and special sporting moments. Coronavirus is hurting yet another sporting code in the country, this time Rugby Union, with Rugby Australian Chief Executive Raylene Castle announcing that 75% of its workforce will be stood down from April 1st. The remaining number of staff will be offered significant salary reductions or reduced hours. The game is projected to lose up to $120 million should the Super Rugby and Wallabies domestic test calendar be cancelled as a result of the virus. Ending cricket, speculation is rising as to whether Steve Smith should receive the captaincy after the lifting of his two-year leadership ban following the ball tampering scandal in South Africa. Shane Warne says that Smith should only focus on batting and not succeed Tim Payne as Australian Test captain. The current Australian Test captain even listed Travis Head, Alex Carey, Marnus Labuschagne or Pat Cummins as other candidates to take over the captaincy. It's not yet known as to how long Tim Payne can continue to captain the side, but it looks certain that the Australian cricket team is building a strong group of leaders. NLT Australia, five metres out. The Wallabies, they need a try and a converted try at that. As Quade Cooper gets the ball, what magic can he do as he's met by a strong defence? Burgess as well, goes for a snipe. The Wallabies haven't won against the All Blacks in 10 consecutive matches. What can they pull together in Hong Kong? As Quade Cooper jumps into halfback, goes down to Rob Simmons, out the back to Beal. Now Adam Ashley Cooper, he looks for his winger. There's nobody out there, so he ducks back inside and he's taken high. Penalty Australia, we've got the advantage for a high tackle. Beal goes into halfback to Mitchell. Now Pocock gets it, what can he do? He marches forward to the 10 metre line. Burgess, Cooper, quick ball, O'Connor gets on the outside of Mia Lamu and he's over in Hong Kong. Water and Resource Minister David Littleproud will meet with farming leaders tomorrow in the Victorian town of Mildura, following claims investors hoarded water from the Murray-Darling River. It's alleged that investors who don't own any agricultural land cornered the market for irrigation water along with the gain into the market. The price of water from the Murray-Darling River has increased from $135 per megalitre in 2016 to where it is now at $5,000 per megalitre. Meanwhile, it's been revealed that both US and Chinese investors hold the largest stake in foreign water entitlements in Australia. This is Hamish Southall reporting. 